Hi all. Yo, what's up? Pika Kid Nanny here and welcome back to Nostalgia Overdrive Reborn. Now, I just want to state that the reason that this video is coming out instead of the Mega Drive and Genesis video is because even though everything's appa everything apparently worked, it just didn't work. It, we had the capture card set up, it didn't even boot onto the TV, so... Yeah. Absolutely good. So today we're going to be talking about Retro Revival. Now if you don't know what that is, I have a list right here. Return to Retro, which is new re-releases. I meant to say new releases, not new re-releases. That... D <sighs> <laughs> retro re-release collections, like ROM collections, and retro remakes, like from the ground up remakes, not just basic like remasters. So let's start off with new releases. So I have the list here, like Mega Man 9 and 10 and Bloodstained, like the, the two Bloodstained games that were released like in the style of the NES games. You saw me play one of them. What do you think of that? When a game that starts off with 2D and then goes to 3D, but then a new game goes back to 2D, what do you think of that? So I mean, I think this revival bit is taking it away from the original retro games. I'm, I know I'm going away here, but there was an advert on Sky last night about original films of the 80s and 90s and reboots of the millennium 2010s and teens. And you had Footloose, and it's the same film, but done 20 years later. It's not like a, a follow-on, it's actually just they've made the same film. And to me, you can't beat the original. So you're saying that, sure, the games might be good, but you still prefer the originals. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you know, is it? You you've let me play on one of them ones that you just bought about. Yeah. The Sonic one. And yes, I enjoyed it. The Sonic fan games, if you're yeah. wondering. I enjoyed that, but I didn't enjoy it as much as playing Sonic on the Master System or the Mega Drive or even the Mega CD. The gameplay, the the screen, the noise, everything it seems better to me. I mean, I'm you know, I'm I'm old school like that, and I'm just starting to learn about all this new stuff. With you. So essentially what you're saying is that you enjoy the game, but you don't enjoy what the game actually entails for essentially replacing the classic games in your mind. Yeah, I don't think you can replace them. You can try, you can get near it, but I mean I could tell it wasn't an original game. Yes, I mean they've done a fantastic job. They're fantastic how I can't get over, and I mean same with them games that you've done, I can't get over how people can just create a game like that in the, in the room, in the house. It encourages you to play the original game, which I think is the yeah. most part, yeah. for the most part, like when a fan game exists, it's not just saying, oh, my fan game is better than the official games. It's more, my fan game exists, go and play the official games. Yeah, that's, that's what does it. It gets you thinking about it. I mean, people of my age who bought the consoles new in the, early, in the early 90s, I mean, I bought all of my consoles new from Dixon's. And I mean, it was even Tandy before that. And you're getting these kids now, they're paying three, four times as much as I used to pay for original ones. They're paying on eBay, Amazon, a fortune because the retro and you know the, the kids are playing these fan games and they want a, a taste of what it was like back then and that's why they, that's why they're worth so much money you pay a fortune for games you pay a fortune for consoles because there's such a big demand for them and that's down to the fan games getting made so you're talking about fan games but i was i was talking about the official ones but i guess fan games are technically that because there are many fan games that like for example, there's Ultimate Flash Sonic, which literally boots up and tells you, go play Sonic Advance. So I've got Sonic 1 and 2 for the Mega Drive. Now, them are old games. Now, are you telling me that Sega are making these games now? No. If you want to experience the real thing, that's what you need. Is that and a console to suit. And honestly, the, the gameplay is fantastic but it's just a shame that we couldn't get to do it tonight yeah we think that the console might be defective because a certain someone dropped it and i'm still absolutely good by that you know i've had it for years and i thought it was fixed but hey ho okay so the next one is retro re-release collections like the compilations like the sega mega drive and genesis classic sonic gems collection in other words games that just take the original compiled roms and just bundle them together so like I was telling you, the first game I bought for the PlayStation 4 was a Sega game collection and it's got all the classics on. To be honest, I, I think I can probably speak for you and immediately say like, when it comes to playing retro re-release collections, it's always down to what co what like controller you're yeah. playing on. Because it's like, if you're playing a game for like the Mega Drive or Genesis and you're playing with like an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller or DualShock 4 or whatever, it's like, what do those buttons do? Like the A, B and C buttons, like, what do they get mapped to? Well, you know what it is, 
I mean, I, I play it with the, the wireless PS4 controller. Yeah. And you've got all the top buttons, the side button and everything. You need to be an octopus. But they've only done it as if you're holding a, a D-pad. For the most part, with other buttons in retro collections, it's like, say for example, with like the shoulder button, they'll usually be like opening the, the menu or a quick save or a quick load. It's like emulator stuff. Yeah, but you couldn't do that on the originals. You couldn't like open the menu or nothing. Unless, of course, you're playing something like, say, let's say someone took the original Genesis or Mega Drive Mortal Kombat game, which had the six button controller, or like the Street Fighter, whatever, you would have more buttons to work with because it would require the original six button controller, but you're still playing it with like an Xbox 360 or one controller, which is like, the first buttons are only four, where do the other two go? Oh, it's the shoulder buttons. It's like, that doesn't feel good. Even for me, like, it's like, you're pressing normal buttons, but they're shoulder buttons, and but it's like, it's just like, quarter circles, but it's like, you should just do that. It's like, no, I'm pressing two buttons. I mean, I, I still, I still luck, I remember it well. That day over there, you had that master system control on your left. Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> yeah, when I held that Mega Drive controller, I thought, wow, okay, this actually feels a lot better, and it genuinely does. Hang on. So for those that don't know, this is the controller, and this, like, if this was in, if this was like made for a PC. Now, the thing is, like, we actually talked about this off camera, but this is for the Model One because. We, we both prefer the Model 1 because the Model 1 is the only one that can actually clip in like a Mega CD or a Sega CD. It's the only one. For some reason they removed that. I don't know why. But yeah, so it's like you have you have the D-pad here, which is a shield style D-pad. Which means that if, you, if you're playing, instead of going like that, you just go like that. Which is, in my opinion, feels much better than a regular D-pad. And you have A, B and C. It says trigger for some reason. And the so please use your fire button for the trigger. And then a start button up here. Now usually when people see a controller, they think of a start and select button being right here. But instead the start button's right here, which is kind of strange. Because you're only using your thumb on that side. You only, yeah. you only want to use your thumbs. I mean I guess I mean I guess actually using it like this, it is kind of hard to accidentally hit the start button. Like if I'm going like that, for example, yeah. nothing that accidentally. See, because it's it's in the reach of your thumb. Yeah, so it's like, if I have to, if I want to press start, I have to straight reach up for it. I don't, I can't just go, oops, I accidentally paused the game. Like, I just press the buttons like that. That actually does feel really good. I'm, I'm going to say that for a fact. That feels much better. So, I know this is a bit of a tangent from what we're talking about, but hey, that's, that's why, that's why I like actually doing these videos, because if it goes into a tangent, it feels like a tangent from fans of retro stuff. So, in other words, that's a racing game, there's Tailspin. There's Aladdin on the Mega Drive. That's good. That's really good. That's the best version. Like many people don't like the SNES version because, I mean, sure you can throw apples in this one, but that was like I said this to you before. The, the default attack in the SNES version was throwing apples. There was no sword. Because this is back in the day when it was like, oh no, we have to remove the blood. Retro re-releases are good because it allows people to play new. It allows people to play old games on new consoles, and it, it's preservation, which is why I like emulation. However. Porting them or putting them in collections in new consoles kind of destroys, you know. So I mean, it's it's unfortunate enough. I mean, my I was born in 1970, and I got all the consoles in the 90s because I was in the early 20s, the late teens, early 20s. I'm fortunate enough to still have them and have played them most of my life. Now, other people who grew up in my era, who had the Sega consoles that they haven't anymore and they cost too much to get so they've got a PC or, or a laptop or something and it's good because they can play the games that they used to play back in the 90s without forking out all the money. That's why I've said many times before that I that I like emulation yeah. because sure emulation is infamous for being promoting piracy you know it like promotes piracy because anyone can just download a ROM but think of it if you played an old game on an old console, and all of a sudden that console, or the cartridges, they just die. Or let's say for example you bought like three different versions of Sonic 1, none of them work. Then you would use emulation well, it's, And the easier way to put it, is all the videos, like VHS and even Betamax that we used to watch in the late 70s and early 80s. Obviously you can't get them anymore, you can't buy videos. People can watch what they used to watch in the 70s, 80s, even old films of the 50s and 60s. Even in the 20s, like if you yeah. want to watch Long Hardy. Thanks to Netflix. And it's exactly what these emulators and that's doing. Yeah, exactly. Although yeah. It's, it's more difficult for emulation because with like, when you said like Betamax and all them, 
it's literally just taking the files and just maybe up them a little bit, maybe, or maybe in some cases not, and just put them somewhere else. Yeah. But with games, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to play a Mega Drive game on a PC because you need specialised software, so someone actually needs to know exactly how the console itself works and replicated in software. Okay, so Retro Remix. Now, this is taking an old game and making a DX version, like for example with Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX, which I actually talked about before, and it's taking the original game and not just doing a slight remaster to the original code, completely remaking it, like the Crash Insane tr trilogy or the Spiral Reignited trilogy. What do you think of those, even if it's very faithful? I haven't had much to do with like the remakes of them, but I don't know, it's a, it's a tough one because I mean it's it's obviously going to be better. Yeah. Because there's a lot more technology now to make it smoother, better sound quality. So yeah, I mean it's it's a good way to go as long as it can keep the majority of the original in it. Well, let's say for example it was a full-on remake of a game that you really liked, but it's like it just fixed some of the issues. Sure, maybe the graphics are slightly updated. It actually has like better music, like actual, well I mean better music, it's subjective, but let's say actual music that isn't just like instrument files using like the Genesis sound font. Actual music, slightly upraised graphics, but with all the bug fixes, so it's basically the same game except now it's completely redone from the ground up. Yeah, I mean I can, you can live with that, I mean, he had one back to films, you think some of the film buff. They do that with films. They bleach them, yeah. And they make it better, there's no hissing, there's no black marks or anything, but yeah, yeah I mean, it's to do that with a game, I can see the point of doing it. Yeah. As long as they don't, as I say, as long as they don't move away from the original too much. There's something called Pac-Man World Repack, and it's basically the original Pac-Man World, except better graphics. I mean, they, they sort of kept the controls, except they added some extra mechanics, like the flood jump, or... There's this one mechanic in 3D or 2.5D games, you know, when you have, like, a, like an extra depth, called a drop shadow. And essentially, you know when, you know when a character jumps and you see that little... It doesn't even have to be an actual shadow, just a little, just a little circle. Yeah. That's essentially to say to the player, okay, if we you're jumping right now, that is where you're going to land. And they completely screwed it up. Like the original game had it fine with like a proper drop shadow, but they tried to make it an actual shadow, and in some cases, like, oh yeah, the shadow's on there, yep, I'm gonna land on that platform, you fall right past it. Like what? Why is the shadow cast? Like why is it actually being cast instead of just of being a drop shadow? So they completely screwed that up, and that wasn't in the original game. Yeah, because a shadow should be where you take off from. So when it comes to retro remakes, there are some good examples when it's just a 2D game. Like for example with Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Like what I've played of it so far, I've, I I kind of like it. And also there's an option to just go back to the original graphics. Like if you don't like the new HD graphics and just say, I want a better version of Alex Kidd, maybe with some bug fixes, just use the original graphics. A lot of times companies will do that sort of thing where it's like, if you don't like the new music or you don't like the new graphics, they have an option to just use the original versions. So anyway, we've been your hosts, Nostalgia Old Drive Reborn. This has been Nostalgia Geek Out and you've all been fantastic. So until the next video, we say bye-bye. Bye-bye.